And joining me now is Republican Senator Roger Wicker of Mississippi. He's a member of the Armed Services Committee. He also co-chairs the Commission on Security and Cooperation in Europe. Senator Wicker, welcome back to Meet the Press, sir. Thank you. Glad to be here. I'm going to start with something that we got a report on earlier this week, and it has to do with uh, a, supposedly an intelligence briefing that senators have received. First, let me play what Fiona Hill said about Russia and Ukraine at the hearing earlier this week. Take a listen. Right now, Russia's security services and their proxies have geared up to repeat their interference in the 2020 election. We are running out of time to stop them. In the course of this investigation, I would ask that you please not promote politically driven falsehoods that so clearly advance Russian interests. Can you confirm that you guys have been given an intelligence briefing on this issue that Russia is trying to frame Ukraine? Some members have. I have not. Okay. But I'm, I'm not at all surprised that Russia is gearing up. Uh, I'm not at all surprised that, uh, that she's correct that Russia tried to interfere in 2016. Also, Ukrainians themselves tried to interfere also. But Chuck, Isn't I, there a I big difference to... between the two and Ukrainians? Look, I, I, I understand there's individual Ukrainians who were upset that the that candidate Donald Trump wanted Crimea to stay with Russia. Is that the same as the Russian government and Putin ordering a full-fledged interference in the United I, States? I'm, con I'm concerned about both. I'm concerned about both. But let me say this, Chuck. Um, I just have to start. I, I totally disagree with your lead-in to this whole show today. Okay. I, 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 I think the, the Washington punditry is somewhat in a bubble on this. I, I think the Democrats had a bad week. Why is that? Uh, last week. And, Why is that? And, well, okay. For one thing, the polls are turning in the president's favor. You've got the Marquette poll mm -hmm. in Wisconsin, which is the gold standard of Wisconsin polls. Mm -hmm. Then you've got the Emerson poll, which is a, a nationwide poll, which actually shows uh, Trump's favorability mm -hmm. going up. And, and I just think the people out there don't think this, system, this uh, investigation is fair. Uh, they know that only Democrat witnesses were allowed to be called. None of the witnesses... That's not that, true. That, they, they made requests. Some of them were, were, were indeed called. There were some witnesses of Republicans and, and, that were as called. A, as a matter of fact, here's what happened. There, there were three witnesses that Democrats asked for and Republicans asked for. Mm -hmm. Those three witnesses Fair enough. got called. None of the witnesses that were exclusively called by the Republicans were, uh, were asked. And, and, you know, you, you asked the question about the whistleblower. Yeah. And, and so um, Chairman Schiff has decided that it wouldn't be beneficial to his case. Yeah. Well, it might be beneficial if some of the Republicans were allowed to cross-examine this person. So it's a totally, uh, totally uh, uh, inadequate. Well, I understand you disagree with my premise. Let me, let me put up what Peggy Noonan said. Okay. She's no liberal. Last time I checked. And here's what Peggy, Peggy Noonan's uh, take on this impeachment process. As to impeachment itself, the case has been so clearly made, you wonder what exactly the Senate will be left doing. How will they hold a lengthy trial with a case this clear? Who exactly will be the president's witnesses? Those who testify that he didn't do what he appears to have done and would never do it. Respond to Peggy Noonan on well, that. Well, I just totally disagree with Peggy on that. And, and, of course, she writes a column every week in the Wall Street Journal and, uh, and, and I, I, it's not the first time I've, I've disagreed. Fair enough. But, uh, you know, again, let me go back to what the public is seeing. I do think the public uh, is kind of tuning out, uh, kind of bored. I, I think, and you look, the think the there's a political argument and there's a legal argument. Do you, let's set aside the political argument. Are you at all troubled by the behavior of the president, Rudy Giuliani, what was done here, the fact that he mentioned Biden's never talked about corruption in the phone call. Any of this stuff trouble you? I think the phone call, and I read the transcript, went back and read it last night in yeah. preparation for this. I think the phone call was legitimately about corruption in Ukraine. Um, well, Vice President you, well, Biden asked right, about corruption. Well, let me pause there because here's Ukraine, what the president. Had a right to do so. Here's what the president said he wanted to see uh, President Zelensky do in response to his phone call. This is the president's own words. Well, I would think that if they were honest about it, they'd start a major investigation into the Biden. More confirmation he was asking about the Biden senator, not well, corruption. Okay, that, he didn't I, mention I, corruption. I just heard what, what the president said. Here's what Zelensky said. Yeah. Zelensky said that he was under no pressure to do anything. 
he didn't even know the aid was being held up. You don't think he feels the, pressure not aid, to disagree with President Trump right now in public, in fairness? Do you think that would be a good, I, a good I, idea of him if he disagreed with the president's take? I, I think he's telling the truth. And I think, well, you know, if you're going to try to remove the president of the United States mm -hmm. from, uh, from office, you need concrete uh, evidence. And, and the other person on the part of this so-called mm -hmm. quid pro quo denies that there was a quid pro quo. And also, let me just ha have to interject this. Everything that, that you felt was so compelling in your lead up mm -hmm. uh, w was guesswork, was hearsay. There, there was no direct evidence of, of, uh, of pressure on the Ukrainian government to do a certain act in, in order for the aid to, to go forward. And, and uh, I, I, I just, I really, I, I don't see uh, what you and your producers see in the lead up there. I think it was a bad week. I think the American okay. people are, are moving away from the Democratic position. On let, let me ask you this. I want to play an excerpt from um, your support for Clinton's impeachment. Okay, and I'm, good. And let me play that. The rule of law means that the commander in chief of our armed forces could not be held to a lower standard than are his subordinates. The rule of law is more important than the tenure in office of any elected official. If you see proof in this Senate trial that this president of the United States violated the rule of law, would that be enough for you? Well, I haven't, uh, I'm nowhere close to seeing that proof. Let me say this. We, we learned some political lessons in the impeachment of, of Bill Clinton. But, but give us this. There were Democrats who voted for impeachment also in the House of Representatives, and a a judge in Arkansas had, you had that found as has found as a matter of fact that President Bill Clinton had committed perjury, yeah. a felony in almost every state. So uh, the the evidence was uh, was pretty overwhelming, uh, not to mention the, the taking advantage of uh, of a young employee. Um, you have a lot of military bases. You have a lot of military constituents. I'm curious. We're going to have a large may have a large debate about this. Who should decide who's a seal? The President of the United States or fellow SEALs? You're probably aware of the controversy involving um, this, this chief, chief Gallagher here. Should the President short circuit this or not? Would you like to see the SEALs yeah. make this decision? And, uh, I think the President, as Commander in Chief, can make this decision. He can legally make he, it. Should I think, he, though? Uh, I, I feel very comfortable with him making it. I feel very comfortable with what he's done uh, on the other two cases. So I'm, I'm with him there. Sorry. Okay. No. Just asking. Don't apologize to me. <laughs> Senator Roger Wicker, Republican from Mississippi. Thanks for coming on, sharing your views. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Hello from Washington. I'm Chuck Todd, and thanks for checking out the Meet the Press channel on YouTube. Click on the button down here to subscribe and click over here to watch the latest interviews, highlights, and other digital exclusives.